Okay, we're recording. I was holding up this uh, foam just to see, like, if the... Because I know that, like, because of the wood floors, I think the reverb might be a little bit more noticeable. I see. Um, so, I don't know. I was thinking about uh, getting some, like, acoustic foam. But I don't know how I would how that would work in here, though. Because uh, yeah. you have to, like, tape it to the wall or glue it to the walls. So it has to be in your own personal studio. I was actually at the uh, Midway Mall uh, yesterday, and... Uh, like all these, uh, all these uh, stores out of business and empty. I was, I was wondering, like, I wonder, like, I wonder why nobody's like set up like a studio or anything in here. So I remember there was a radio station, uh, like, set up in um, one of the uh, empty stores. I, I think the issue is it's fucking Midway Mall. It's yeah. like, but I mean, if it's just for like a uh, personal studio or whatever, like, if you're not like trying to bring in customers, maybe like, if it's you had pricing. A stu- yeah, probably, I, I imagine. I mean, I wonder, like, I mean, they probably, it probably is because, like, they're not getting much business, like, it's, they're pricing it higher. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, like, maybe it's the opposite, but I don't know. Like, there's, that's probably the reason why. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm, I, was, I was saying, like, I've, my uh, sleep apnea is starting to kick my ass. Uh, thankfully, my uh, appointment, the dentist appointment is coming up soon, so I'll be able to be getting into the mouth guard thing soon. Words, words, vomit. You're not going to get that thing. Uh-huh. I used to have one where it's like, but it, go, it doesn't go up like full over your mouth and went up like to my no- nostrils, but it, I just couldn't sleep with it Did on. Did you wake up like fucking Bane? No, I couldn't sleep with it oh, on. Fuck. I couldn't go to sleep with it on. Um, yeah, it was that uncomfortable. I was just not able to get used to it, and that's why I switched to the mouth guard. Um, I see. But yeah, uh, there was like... <laughs> I messaged you on Facebook saying, you know, like, we might have to wing this one, but I did think of a few things to talk about. I got one. Okay. We have a new game. Right. Should I take it away? Sure. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Resident Evil got me into horror. Uh, my sister had the Outbreak game, and I was so scared to play because when you play one, like, Resident Evil mm-hmm. Outbreak. And I'm like, oh, shit, scary voice, man. <laughs> and then I actually play, like, holy shit, this is my aesthetic. Really shitty people caught in a shitty circumstance. So, <laughs> they announced Read 2. I know Resident Evil 2 fairly well. I've uh, played it through uh, emulators a couple dozen times. Mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing, but you can do the exact same game, basically the same map, and still have it be scary. Huh. Like, you know when the scares are coming, but it's still effective. Huh. It also doesn't rely on too many jump scares. Hmm. Huh. The biggest jump scare in a fucking game is when you think you kill a zombie and you didn't. <laughs> and I've been watching uh, Oni Plays play through uh, of the RE2 remake. Oh, man. Really I really, I'm sorry. It's really funny. Um, like, they're always really funny. Um, My favorite thing, though, is um, I, there's a YouTuber I watch named Pick Asprey. And what I'll do is I'll, like, when I was playing Resident Evil 2, I, ha- I turned on his Resident Evil 1 or 2, but the original. Mm-hmm. So I can compare to, like, Claire A and his Claire A. Because hmm. you can play two paths of two different characters and you unlock others. Mm-hmm. They also have, um, they have this feature. It's the only thing I'm not quite sure on. So you know how in basically every uh, game, if you drop an enemy to zero health, they drop dead? Mm -hmm. Not all enemies stay dead if you don't do it. You know, there's a chance that they might come back. So I just take a knife and I fucking hack the body up. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Mm -hmm. The knives have, like, durability, don't they? Yep. And Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep jamming a knife into a rib cage, eh, Mm -hmm. but you can't unlock an infinite knife that I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, It's really scary. It's like... I don't get scared in games much, but I turn on my flashlight and I see a dark hall and I'm like, oh, fuck no. Mm-hmm. And the star of this game isn't Claire or Leon. It's fucking the tyrant, Mr. X. Because mm-hmm. you hear a... <laughs> it's like you're an eight-year-old hiding under the, the blanket from your drunk stepdad looking for you. I mean, there's a reason so many memes were made about him. Yeah, it's Survivor. It, you know, And I did like, you know, obviously he dies. You fucking blow him to pieces. And Mm. I'm spoiling the entire game for him, sorry. That's fine. Um, Okay, speaking of memes and video games, I was thinking about this today was uh, nobody's talking about Fortnite anymore. Have you noticed that? Um, There are over 13-year-olds posting on cringy YouTube videos, but Uh that's about it. Yeah, but, like, for the most part, like, at least the places I've been circling, uh, like, there's been almost, like, it's almost gone completely dead. Like, more people are playing Minecraft now. 
Yeah, that's like I I have on Discord all my friends are Minecraft, 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 Kawada Shoujo, Minecraft. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I guess like the popularity of that is like screeching to a halt, uh, or uh, of a Fortnite. Yeah, they're probably gonna pull some stunt, you know, like a lot of companies do. I don't know. I don't imagine what they would do, like to bring back in players at this point. It seems like they've already gone through like all their uh, like their hype stuff. Yeah, they can't really like you know battle royale with character cr- character creation skins. That's gonna be it. Mm-hmm. Customizable skins. Yeah, but then it would be like the people who are like uh, shelling out V bucks for like the the uh, exclusive ones. They'd probably feel <sighs> screwed screwed over. I don't imagine that they would do that because then they wouldn't be able to make money off. Well, of Well, no, the, they'd be the most elite V bucks, and you have to use your other skins to get parts. Hmm. You know, I like that Minecraft is back in the spotlight. I can't wait till we have Dwarf Fortress. Or, or actually, as we called on YouTube, oh my god, Goblin killed my camp in Dwarf Fortress. LOL, must watch, <laughs> not fake. How would you feel if there was, they made a sequel to Dwarf Fortress and it was in 3D? That would require one of two things. That hell freezes over, or in one day, Toadie finishes the game. <laughs> that he just walks out, it is done. <laughs> Like if uh, Microsoft or like a big company approached them to, like they like they did with Minecraft. Yeah, that was, like that would kind of, it would but, kind of uh, ruin the uh, independence nature of it. Yeah, like there, I cannot think of another game where you can have a, you can have a baby wrestle a were beast to death. Mm-hmm. That happens a couple times, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a game where you can hypothetically make superhumans by burning them to death and, fr- and hitting them with water simultaneously. Mm-hmm. The game brings out the worst in people. <laughs> yeah, like, Microsoft, you know, EA, EA buys Dwarf Fortress. Oh, oof. You have to buy race packs, and you mm. like, you have to buy, like, you know, um, mm. you have to buy minerals, you know, mineral packs, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I keep saying oof. I gotta switch to saying bruh now, because that's what's in. Broad. Yeah, that's bruh. You, no, you, it's you, bruh. You have to say bruh from buying them bruh. <laughs> Bro. Uh, sounds like a something that like your grandma would say on Facebook. I don't know. God. Um, um let's see what else. Oh yeah, um I was like one of the like, I think the only talking point that I brought up was uh t- cartoon remakes. Oh, I or cartoon was it reboots or re- I mean same thing. Yeah. But uh yeah, because uh I think that those are like are there, are, are there still like Cartoon remakes are like being made now. Because the Can't last one, Rocco. Uh, oh yeah, well yeah, like the specials. Uh, I'm talking more about like the long term series, like the Powerpuff Girls reboot. Um, Shira. Uh, that terrible uh, Thundercats one that everybody went quiet on. Thunder. <laughs> um, I know there's the Shira one, and that makes me think there's going to be a He Man one coming out soon. Uh, I heard that. Uh, I think it was Kevin Smith. I saw this like just uh, like sidebar uh ad or whatever for an article saying that kevin smith was seeking to like conclude he-man's story or something like makes like i guess a movie or something to like finish the story or whatever he cannot be the sole writer or director yeah exactly like if you ask me like i don't know 10 or so like probably 20 years ago i'd be like sure why not but like lately it's just been oof. everything he touches turns to shit no i say ooh not oof i want that to be clear to the audience um did you see that picture of him like uh after the uh, after he watched captain marvel and he's like crying after it it's like really captain marvel i think it's it was he mentioned like oh yeah like because i think they mentioned him by name in the movie oh so that makes it seem like really really narcissistic well, I mean, like, I, I can kind of see it. He's a big nerd. Yeah, he's a big baby nerd who poops in his diaper. And I will Goo Goo partially Gaga. defend Kevin Smith. Partially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, some of the stuff he made in the 90s was good. Uh, I, like, I, sh- I should probably go back and rewatch Clerks, because I remember the first time I watched it, I couldn't, like, stomach, like, 15 minutes I kinda of it. I kind of like Dogma. Really? Kind um, of. Because I remember watching, like, half of that, and I didn't finish that either, um, but... I don't know. Uh, My sister made me watch it and because she needed someone to watch it with. And basically it became like, oh, this movie is okay. Mm-hmm. I think everybody says, everybody agrees that Mallrats is probably his uh, best movie. Never watched that, though. Same. Um, I'm mostly known from Jane Silent Bob. Yeah, like I remember, I watched, that's the only one that I watched completion of his. And 
even now people say that it's a pretty terrible movie. But I, I wonder if it falls under the uh, sort of Freddy Got Fingered thing, where it's a, like a mo- like a movie that's really bad, but it's still pretty funny. It's like an avant-garde bad. Yeah, but I remember like bits and pieces of it, and I don't think a lot of it's aged well. Uh, I'd have to w- go back and watch it myself. It's on Netflix, so I can watch it at any time, I guess. You know, I kind of like films that don't age well. Sometimes, it depending on how they age. Yeah, in some cases, it's a time capsule of the era it was made in. Like, look at 1930s movies like The Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. It is weird how... It's 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 an amazing form of acting. Because mm-hmm. Claude Rains mispronounces almost every word. I swear to God, his accent is so wonky. Huh. He's British and he can't even do a British accent well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was another uh, thing that I thought of when I said, uh, like, time cap. Oh, yeah, it was uh, because I remember uh, Nickelodeon, I think they might still have their service, The Splat, where it's like, uh, like just, it's just an online streaming service where they show, like, their old 90s stuff, mm-hmm. like the cartoons. But then they have, like, the live action stuff, which is aged terribly. Mm, like, like iCarly? I, not even, like, even, like, stuff like All That and The Amanda Show. So, like, even the stuff that's considered good by nostalgia boys, uh, it's like 90s kids, even that stuff... It's like you can't really got to squint hard to sort of see it as still kind of decent. Y- y- like, it's funny when you're a kid. Like, loud noises are funny when you're a kid, but as an adult, it's like it's really, really hard to go back to that. I, 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 I understand, like, there are some things I liked as a kid that when I watch make me... It's like my eyes are about to explode. I can't explain it. You're like Zoe 101. God. Like, I remember that just being really boring. Yeah. Um... um I Carly is an example. Yeah. Um, it had good episodes. Uh, none that I can remember. I mean, I didn't it watch had a it. good joke once in a while. I like the ostrich. I, yeah. I like seeing a fucking ostrich. That's yeah. what I liked. Yeah, that meme sort of put that back in the spotlight. Yeah. I like the YouTube poops made at iCarly. Like that. Like the uh, the one uh, Spencer throws a bagel into uh, uh, Freddy's rectum or whatever. Like that's a good one. My oh. favorite thing, uh, meme or YouTube poop and things come to be heavily memed is Arthur memes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like YouTube poop is making a comeback now. Because uh, I think I mentioned this on the last episode, the YouTube poop out of context. Mm-hmm. No, no, this, this is a different conversation we didn't record. Uh, oh, we, we, and, and believe it or not, we have conversations that we don't record um, that yeah. aren't put into the podcast. But I mentioned uh, YouTube poop out of context, and it's like a Twitter account that just takes uh, they, they take submissions of like uh, like ten to thirty minute uh, thirty second uh, clips of uh, YouTube poop, and like they just take it out of context. And you, so and it's funny because even in context, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But out of context, yeah, it's just like bits and pieces of uh, like best ofs, I guess highlights. Um, I like I submitted a few of them, like a few uh, more obscure um, YouTube poopers. Um, and he, I even, like, because they have a Discord, and uh, I even, like, submitted that one that I made back in 2013 of Degrassi. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that one. You need to send it to me. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I got some good compliments off of it, because I, I, like, I was holding that back for a long time, because I was just kind of, like, uh, kind of cringing over it. You had to let it free, like, a flock of butterflies. Yeah, I had to wait until it became, like, uh, post-ironic, almost, to... You know, upload it and be like, eh, eh, pretty cringe, eh, bro? Bruh? Whatever? Do you even cringe? How do you do, fellow kids? God, I like that meme so much. Yeah, what, what movie is that from? I, is that from a show? I think it's from a show. I think it's like a, a cutaway gag. It's a Steve Buscemi, yeah. I, Steve Buscemi, he's a wild guard. Yeah. He was in Spy Kids too, right? Like, we always keep bringing that up. I know, we? because I can't believe it's him, and I can't believe he said that line. Mm-hmm. I like to imagine, like, his line was... It be how it do, and he walks off. There were a lot of big names in those Spy Kids movies. Even because so. it was an easy film to make. I think it's because Robert Rodriguez had so many connections, and probably has like some uh, Me Too folders that he's ready to like throw out there if somebody says no to him. <laughs> like they're walking. Like my my theory is that it's easy being a Spy Kids movie because look at the quality of the acting. Well, yeah, they probably get paid up the asshole for like being in like one like for I one liked, minute. I liked I liked the Spy Kids movie as a kid. Mm-hmm. I fucking love the second one because you know Chimera monster puns mm-hmm. but the third one they have fucking machete uh-huh. yeah well yeah danny treasure is in like all three of the movies uh, you cannot tell me that that is not the same universe <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's, his name even in the in the movies is uncle machete 
I know, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is the main bad guy in the third movie. That is fucking Sylvester. Mm -hmm. You know when you're a kid, you can see an actor and you memorize their face, but you don't consider them that actor unless you look back? Uh -huh. um, it makes me it makes me remember, speaking about Sylvester Stallone, getting off topic, is uh, that new Terminator movie that's coming out. It yeah. looks so bad. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger, I thought. No, that's a... That's a yeah, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it was making me think of like 80s action movie stars. Oh, yeah. I remember that one uh, Family Guy cutaway gag from like season two where it's like uh, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like this big like action tr build up trailer and then it shows them both in like a boat and it's like this romantic comedy or like uh, My Friend Cecil or something. It's you like, know what I want to do like for a Terminator thing? I would play up the age of the Terminator like what's wrong? He's my arm does not work because mm -hmm. I cannot do Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. And he has to like cut up and he has to repair himself using other Terminators. Mm -hmm. Hmm, that'd be neat. Yeah, and like they could have like him rip a Terminator in half and get four arms. Yeah, is he the? But like, he, what confuses me is that like he was uh, like he got uh, like thrown a mo like lowered into molten metal at the end of the second movie. So how is he still in the? I think it's a it's a timeline thing where in, yeah, in, in Genesis timeline they were able to reprogram before he went into the metal. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I love that scene so much. You know what's referenced in Mortal Kombat, Shaolin Monks? Hmm. If you kick Scorpion into the lava, he does the thumbs up as he sinks. Oh yeah, in Doom 2016, there's a death animation if you fall into lava where Doom Guy does that. <laughs> God. I can't wait for Eternal. That, that, like, that's probably the one video game coming out uh, this year that I'm excited for. Heart, you know, I'm excited too. I really hope that, like, you know, that the angel fights are going to be just as chaotic as the demons. Oh yeah. I want there to be a fight that has choir music when you fight the angels. Mm. Play Hollow... No, you, you should do. You know the... the what's the, the BFG for... Uh, 6000? Probably. The big one on the Mars? Mm -hmm. That you get to double wield them if you fight a giant angel and hallelujah plays. I think that's the BFG 10,000. Because like the 9,000 is the handheld one. Yeah, I like the BFG. It's a great weapon. It's yeah, a gr I mean it's iconic. Like the it's the phrase like makes you think of a big fucking gun. Do you know what it actually stands for? Biological force gun. Yeah, well, I, I just remember big big fucking gun. Yeah, that's what it stands for. We all know that. Or big friendly giant, depending on like. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I want that crossover little girl. You know, she comes up to her window and a head hits it, and mm -hmm. Doom guy walks up. Mm -hmm. But God. Um. Hey, we were talking about cartoon reboots, weren't we? Yeah. Um, there have been 10 one, you know. Um, pfft, yeah. The only good thing to come out of that and, I guess, other other cartoons is the porn. <laughs> uh, like, this was, yeah. <laughs> if, good for, those, for those of you not here, like, Zach just face-palmed. Yeah, like, that. um... <laughs> like, literally just... Uh, yeah, I apologize for that, Tony. But no, it's, I, I deserve it. Um, you know, like um, I forgot actually that the that Ben Ten reboot thing happened. I wouldn't mind looking into that Shira show. Eh, I've heard that it's okay. Um, I've I've been seeing a lot of people redraw the characters just because, like, uh, I mean, just because, yeah, like when you think about the like the main character, she doesn't even look like she looks like. I remember actually the Shadman comic where that's what I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, that's where it's Ben dressed up as her. From yeah, ben it's like I need I need work. All right, put on this dress and this wig. <laughs> All right, so here is my dark confession. I prefer the original She-Ra to the original He-Man hmm. because they had better villains. Mm -hmm. They had a fucking, like, the villain, Hordak, is like the, the is, he runs the Dunder Mifflin of super, of, like, evil monster mercenaries. Because hmm. Hordak Prime is his older brother, like, hey, bro, you kill that She-Ra yet? No, and go on, killer. <laughs> I have an, a weird interest in the He-Man universe. It's weird. It's actually kind of. It would be a cool setting idea. <laughs> it's to make like a almost eighties toy line as a setting. <laughs> well, there's actually uh, a uh, Netflix documentary series about. Uh, it's called The Toys That Made Us, and there was an episode on He-Man, and they were talking about uh, just like building up from the ground up and how. Uh, you had like the He-Man figure, and they needed like a uh, like a horse or steed thing, mm -hmm. which is where they, where they so they got like a the, the, like the tiger or whatever the tiger's name and that is um, they like they actually pinched it from like a different uh, toy line. Panvor, Panvor. Sure, um, but like it's a different toy line, but with like a like a larger uh, mm -hmm. figure. So the tiger was like as big as He-Man, and then like the guy guy like 
in charge of it. He's like, he's looking at the producer. He's like, dude, this is not going to work. And he's like, I don't give a shit. Just put a fucking saddle on it. Did you know that also in the original toy line was going to be a modified Boba Fett? Huh. Yeah. Was that a man at arms? Or? Yeah. Or he was going to be some villain, but then they actually got a budget and made someone new. Mm-hmm. There actually is this, uh, and this was highlighted at the end of that uh, episode, was that there's like a company that does like high quality uh, He-Man. Oh yeah, um, uh, Four Horsemen. Yeah, that sounds about right. They also do a series of action figures that are bird people, like they have a a bird head and human body, Hmm. and they have a fucking chicken one that's awesome. Hmm. Do they use real feathers? No. Okay. You know what I miss? Action figures that had cloth clothing. Hmm. I wouldn't mind. You know what I want to figure of Mister X with a with a real low. Make it like a pleather jacket so he can like pull. He can flash you with his mutant heart. <laughs> he can shoot off the hat. Yeah, I was thinking like uh, of all like of any cartoons that you can think of. Which one would you like? Which one do you, would you like to see rebooted? Oh. Like any kind of reboot. It doesn't have to be like a crappy reboot, but like an edgy reboot or something. Okay, let's see. Um, here's my shit post answer. I'd like to see a, uh, a tailspin edgy reboot with eh. co- uh, Colombian drug smugglers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they might have made a comic of that, IDW or whatever. Yeah. Which, whichever like, company did the uh, edgy uh, Flintstones reboot. Oh, God. Where they were in like, Vietnam. Like, we participated in genocide, Bonnie. You know what I would actually like to see a reboot of, I think? I would like to see a... Re- Ugh, fuck. I can't even remember its name. You know, like Street Sharks. Yeah. It was the it was the dinosaur version of it because it actually had fucking interesting characters. Hmm. They had like they had a villain that like was he's a Velociraptor who's dumb, but he wasn't that cartoon dumb. He was like, all right, I'll fucking kill you. Shut up. Hmm. And yet, you know, it was kind of awesome. Hmm. Uh, and it was weird because it actually was like they put effort into it. Hmm. Yeah, there are a couple of, uh, like, cartoons or whatever around that era that they do feel like there was an unusual amount of effort put into it. It was a TMNT clone that tried to think. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure if Street Shark was as good, mm-hmm. but... Uh, I th- like, there are a couple I can think of, like, uh, Beast Wars. I remember that? that oh, having... Beast Wars is cheating. It's already too good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you have a Japanese version where you try to imply the, 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 the Griffin one, the Tiger one, was gay? Hmm. They make him use, like, uh, homosexual language or something like that. Hmm. I, I read that somewhere on the Transformers wiki. Huh. It's hard to tell, like, what, like how much of that is true, like, because of, like, weird translation issues. Yeah. It's, like, I've heard stuff like that before where it's like, no, that actually wasn't the case. It was just, like, a conflict of language, uh, hiragana versus katakana versus mm-hmm. kanji language or whatever. Like, which, whichever dialect you're using in that particular region of Japan, yeah. and then just goes, like, on and on and on. And to the point where it's like, why is it, it doesn't even matter, really. Yeah. But my answer for uh, cartoon reboots, I'd like to see. I have a few answers. Uh, one is, um, like, because of the uh, Steven Universe recently, just, I guess, I don't know if you could call it a comeback, but, like, their movie movie just got released. I'm, I call it a comeback. Uh, what's what's that from? I keep hearing that phrase. Uh, Mama said, knock you out. From a... Uh, it's a song. Oh, from, uh, by... LL Cool J. Okay. It was featuring Godzilla King of the Monsters. All right. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, but anyway, um, it reminds me of, uh, like the, St- like the Steven Universe co- movie coming out. It reminded me of this, uh, and I actually still have some sketches from like a couple years ago where I like was giving my own, uh, reboot take on, uh, the series. Cause mm-hmm. at that point I was just really starting to get sick of Steven Universe. I think it was like after the third season, which is where we all started going downhill. Um, or everybody just started like shitting on it after that. Um, but like it would have been like more uh, action oriented, have more toxic masculinity, as they, as the writers would put it. You know what? Think the reboots. I thought of a uh, of one that's kind of cheating. Mm-hmm. The Hanna Barbera Godzilla and Kong show. I'm gonna combine them as one because they're basically the same show. Mm-hmm. But you do it is is in the style of the DC animated universe, mm-hmm. but with Godzilla and Kong. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like how you could do Godzuki. 
That's and weird. Godzuki is actually revealed to be a like Rodan's one of its larval stages. I was gonna say it would be like a like a Godzilla human hybrid. Oh, like they took uh, like some of the Godzilla's like like blood and put I it was in a human. Gonna say, and just have like this abomination just going. Like, ah, it should ah, be ah. the Rodan one because in one of the Godzilla movies, Godzilla basically cucks Rodan. Huh. He lays an egg in Rodan's nest or leaves an egg there, and Rodan goes, "That's my fucking egg." Hmm. And it leads to my favorite scene in Godzilla history because of a rumor behind it, where Godzilla and Rodan team against Mechagodzilla to save the infant. Mm-hmm. Want to know why it's a, what the rumor is? But one of the writers had a homosexual father, and that the references he wanted to have the two dads team up. Hmm. And it's and it's a bizarre, most likely 100 percent false rumor that just someone made up online. But I love the image of, of like my two dads is Godzilla and Rodan rampaging. Mm-hmm. The other answer I had was um, other reboot idea I had was uh, for Powerpuff Girls, like but a, a different version where it's like without the Powerpuff. Like it's it'd be like uh, I think I mentioned this before was uh, where like the Powerpuff Girls have like gone for like ten or so years, and it's like about the secondary characters sort of like forming their own like crime fighting group. Yeah. Um... And it'd be like redeeming a lot of these like characters who are like afterthoughts or asshole characters. Concept. Mojo Jojo becomes their cue. Well, like, yeah, I think the idea is that like like some like like some of those older villains are like fading out. Like especially Mojo Jojo, because like the idea I had was that the like Chemical X has a shelf life, so he's like sort of reverting back to a uh, regular monkey. Oh God, that's horrible. Mm-hmm. You could have man, that's like a really good arc for him. Mm-hmm. Is that he starts you know like Mojo Jojo do not like being turned back to ape. Mm-hmm. And maybe no one can find the formula for Chemical X. Mm. Yeah, like the last of it's just gone. Yeah, and the, and the recipe is unknown. Or it, like, yeah, because like the shelf life thing, it yeah. would all be like sort of decaying. And like, and this might, and that would be really heartbreaking because that was part of his character was that he's very articulate and he overly describes everything down to the T. But like the way, but just like him, like his speech degrading until like all he can say is just Mojo Jojo, Mojo Jojo. Jojo. But no, just imagine him trying to talk and he starts blending into that, and he goes fucking like ape shit, no pun intended. <laughs> And he turns to look at them, and all I can say is, "Leave me alone." And he knuckle walks away. Yeah. Oh man, I oh. <laughs> now I've never a fan. I'd like to see a cartoon read boot of, of uh, um, Def- or Mortal Kombat Defenders of Earth Realm. Uh. Uh, also, you could have an uh, episode in honor of Luke Perry yeah. who played Sub Zero. But here's what they could do: have like you know the Earth Realm defenders, and cut to the villains. Because I don't talk about Shao Kahn, like, fucking Shang Tsung's like, hey, I'm not dead. Also, what's Baraka fucking doing now? Yeah. Yeah, get the studio that did uh, the Netflix uh, adaptation of uh, Castlevania. Oh, my God. I I would have them actually do it, but it would have to be, like, every episode would be a little vignette about the characters. Mm. Like, how Baraka is actually probably the best. He is... He is the cinnamon roll of, of Outworld, how my friend put it. Mm-hmm. He, had my, I'm sorry. Can I share my favorite Mortal Kombat 11 line? Is um, is there's a line that he has where he walks over and says, "Liu Kang, you fight like the dragon." Her reptile says, "We have both to the end of a dragon." He goes, "Do you also breathe fire?" And he mm-hmm. pulls out his blades. I love it so much. Mm-hmm. He's got a sense of childlike wonder as he murders everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my last answer would be uh, detention. Oh, just because like I see a lot of potential in it. It's funny because like you don't really see much of that any, that that concept anymore about like the the center, like the center central idea being kids getting in trouble. It seems like the last one to go like all the way with that was probably Ed, Ed and Eddie. Uh-huh. Like I'm not I'm not sure because. I think it's because like a lot of these kids shows now take place in like fantasy worlds. So they're not like in the real world anymore. Oh, and I think the last example of that might have been Ed, Ed and Eddie and probably Recess is another one that I can think of. I miss Ed, Ed and Eddie. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of kids like and it's funny I was going to say a lot of kids probably miss Recess but they they probably like don't even know, don't what, even it know what it is. Yeah. I was new, lukewarm on Recess for quite a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is kind of dry I guess. I don't know if that's the right word but it's more it's grounded in reality almost to a fault. I love but it. I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. The one episode that I remember is the one where the principal gets hypnotized and the thinking he's a kid again. Oh, that, that was a good one. I remember it being like really. It was a neat, also kind of exploration of uh, his uh, character, I guess. Um, and also, it also reminds me of that episode of the Rugrats where Stu falls off the roof and he like gets a concussion and thinks he's a baby. Oh, 
I imagine then, a horror movie would be through his wife. Oh, no, he's got <laughs> traumatic brain damage. We got to put him down. <laughs> put him out behind the shed. <laughs> and and then you see, like, that's where they buried, like, Bobby's brother. <laughs> from, uh... From, like, another marriage. Or, like, a baby that died from, like... Oh, shape. Tommy's brother. Tommy, Tommy. Yeah, okay, I was I was thinking, like, was that Bob... I messed up Tommy's name, I'm I think, sorry. I think it was that Bobby's World reference. I haven't thought about that in a while. And then, like, my, oh, my God. It's like the actual bit of lore of it, according to the Family Guy wiki, there was a kid who died in yeah, the family. If yeah, Peter Griffin Jr., like, and also the other sister. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, which, yeah, like, I brought up the Family Guy wiki and how they just catalog every one of these, like, minor jokes well, and make it their own its own lore. Which is why I would love to see all that, like, in, the, like, the uh, final season and just taken, like, super seriously. You could have... Like, uh, Peter Griffin Jr. comes back from the dead like uh, um, Jason Todd. And he becomes a vigilante or something. Oh, my God. I'm just, all, all I can picture is, like, a scene of, like, Pe- make the final episode an action horror anime. Mm. Have, like, fucking Peter, like, go to the grave. No, why? <laughs> and he has this hallucination. Now they said, who is he? They call him the Chin. Not to be confused with the charisma and chin. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, that went. That went. Sir, uh, I had no fucking idea. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got for like cartoon reboots. No, it'd like... be an interesting cartoon reboot. Hardcore edgy SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that College Humor did a video like that, oh. like or something like or that. Or making it's the same plot, same writing, but it's actually done with computer generated. It's Lion King with SpongeBob you just getting like a real sea sponge. You know, I remember for the uh, I don't know if it was for the I think it was for the first movie, but they Nickelodeon initially approached uh, John K to do like an adult party cartoon type of short or something to put in front of like. It wasn't. I don't, I don't think it was for the SpongeBob movie, but for like in front of a different movie, mm-hmm. and like they backed out when I think Steven Hillenburg said no. <laughs> but uh, can you picture yeah. the kind of shit that would have come from that? I mean, I, I I mean I've probably seen some takes on what that could have been. There's pro, there's like a ton of Newgrounds cartoons that are probably you know John probably K- better than what John K would have come up with. You know John K did an animated video for Weird Al. Yeah. Um, that was in the 90s, I think, right? Yeah, 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, that sounds about right. But Weird Al has a couple... Of, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to... Well, I remember, like, yeah, he yeah, he did do, like, a... Close But No Cigar, is what it was called. Yeah, and I think I saw, like, a clip of that. I don't I don't think I've seen the it's full thing. It's weird. Mm-hmm. He also did that uh, terrible Simpsons uh, couch gag. Which one? Uh, the, uh, it was, like... Uh, um, John K. doing like this impressionist take on uh, a couch gag and just ended up being like really hard to look at. Oh. Uh, hey, did you know this is a random. F- oh, crap. I forget. I f- oh, no. I remember who it was now. That there is a fucking Castlevania homage in a Weird Al song. Hmm. He has a song called Nature Trail to Hell, and the opening is inspired by his take on Castlevania. Mm-hmm. It came out in the 90s. So. Hmm. See, he's always been a nerd. Yes. He has been. He was born a nerd. He, when he was born, you know, he found like, when's the next Lost in Space airing? Mm-hmm. I remember uh, when I was in like second, third grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was when his uh, like Jurassic Park album came out. Oh, that's fucking top tier. I love it so much. Yeah. Um, now also remember. Like, I think it was in like thir- It was. It was ninety nine, right? Mm-hmm. It, I believe it had to be uh, after ninety three. Okay, yeah, 98 or 99, because I remember uh, that was around the same time I heard, like, some of the girls singing uh, to sing along to uh, Blink-182. It was uh, All the Small Things, and uh, I remember that specifically, like, them singing, like, the chorus. So, you know what's... Like, it was, it was the 90s. I'm going into this, like, reminiscence mode. I'm an old man. Do you man. know... Did I show you that video? It's the, it's, the, it's the youth rapper who has a song called I'm a 90s Kid. I don't know if I don't know. I, don't think I so. would recommend that at the end of the episode you like put in like a, like put in a clip of it, hmm. just because it's so fucking awful. It is literally. I was a '90s kid. I'm a '90s kid. Look, mm-hmm. I played VHS and Pong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't think. Of, I can't hear the word '90s kid anymore without thinking about uh, 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 Joe Gran, his uh, animated. Uh, he did like an animated short called uh, '90s Nick, and it's oh. this guy going, "Do you remember the '90s? If you don't remember gummy, like if you don't remember gummy candies in your lunchbox, you had no childhood." I just love that voice he does. 
I just had... I, I forgot to tell you something. It completely slipped my mind. I got Mass Effect Andronima. Hmm. Ask me how much the special edition was at GameStop. How much was the special edition at GameStop? Six fucking dollars. Hmm. And I'm like... I, I, can't, I wasn't sure if it was a good deal. Hmm. Here's the issue I have with the game. So far, every character I make looks like Onision. <laughs> Even the female ones? Yes. Hmm. I don't like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody hates him. And now no, imagine... Either, and he, he kind of looks like a school shooter no matter what you do. You can't pretty him up. Even the black one looks like Onision. It looks mm-hmm. like he put on blackface. I'm like, <laughs> yeah... Um, um, I'm gonna wait until there's a. I might even have to use the, the canonical character, you know, creator mm. look, which is lame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never finished uh, any of the Mass Effect games. I remember playing some of uh, the first one. I recommend play the first one to get your choices in. Two is the best one, then play three, which is good until it goes. Yeah. Two introduced me to Best Girl. Best Girl's alien who lives in hazmat suit. Mm hmm. Yeah. Who also has a really crappy Photoshop face that no one accepts as canon. Uh-huh. I think I had to point that out to you. I remember, like, didn't they, like, have, like, a picture like this and they photoshopped her fingers? Yeah. And I think that that's actually, like, uh, a stock photo that they picked. God. I don't know. It was either a stock photo or fan art. I think they used... I think they actually used... The it was actress? one or the other. What? The actress? Yeah. It was, like, an act... It was, like, the voice actress, I think. I don't know. But, but I remember there was, a, like, a poster that they had of, you know, the one where it's, like, the spaceship blowing up the uh, the house? Yeah. In the, the farmhouse? I think they actually, that was, like, a stock photo that they took from, like, a website. And they photoshopped it. And Mass, Effect, Mass Effect is an okay game. It's an interesting world. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that uh, KDO706 video, of, um, uh, Mass Effect, or whatever it's called? No, I hadn't. Because like, I, I remember using that, uh, like, clips of that video in the uh, in one of the podcast episodes. I need to go back and watch it one now. Is that yeah. the last one? It was Mass Effect, yeah. And uh, that came before uh, Team Fabulous 2, which I think the Team Fabulous 2 is better. Uh, but, uh, yeah, both of those are really good. I saw a video of Kawada Shoujo, um, and this was back in my weeb days. I have to tell you about my weeb day thing, but I won't. T- but I'll tell this first. Mm-hmm. There was a video where they took the voice lines of TF2 and put them to the girls from Kawada Shoujo. Mm. So they have uh, the. Sp- uh, I think it was um, the spy was done for the burn victim. You know. mm. Yeah. But the best one they had was the fucking legless girl being voiced by Scout. Mm-hmm. Now here's my weeb day story. Now when I was younger, like oh my god, monster girls are awesome. Woo! I, I, I got Don't Starve Together and recently because uh, I want to get back into it. Download Don't Starve Together and it says... Oh. 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 Uh, we're doing a podcast. Uh, we, uh, we're recording. Could you please sorry. wait? I apologize. Sorry. So I'm uh, glad <laughs> that, you, that the lovely lady looks like I can continue the story. <laughs> It says, I already had mods installed. And I'm like, what mod do I have installed? Monster Girl playable character, Fox Girl. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and it caught me off guard completely. It was also that and a skeleton mod because I also like the dude dude memes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that caught me off guard violently. Mm-hmm. I had to sit down for a bit. Like, I stood out my chair so I could sit down. <laughs> Don't bother sitting down because you only shit yourself when you see this. That's a, that's a YouTube poop reference. Uh, you know what I... Uh, also... Um, my, the, the, sorry, the, I just felt secondhand cringe from the thing that just came out of my mouth. I know, I'm sorry. I, I had to wait. I had to wait. I knew that was coming from whiplash. <laughs> uh, um, I was going to say something about... I, I don't remember. It's, it's on my head now. I think I was going to say, like, the uh, they should, instead of getting uh, Spy to do the voice, they should have gotten Pyro. But what voice like? Mm-hmm. They also had the soul. It would um, make sense because like her face is kind of hidden. And the Scottish girl was voiced by Demo. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Uh, I found this out like recently because I was I was watching this uh, three part series on uh, the Sly Cooper trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know that the uh, main villain of the third game is voiced by the soldier's voice actor? Who is the third villain? Uh, Doctor M. He's the he's the baboon scientist who talks like this, and uh, like yeah, I didn't realize that. 
Um, you don't really think about them outside of your games, do mm-hmm. you? Yeah. Uh, it's a really good series. Uh, like the whole, th- the whole, uh, like the three parts all back to back is like about four hours long. God. But it's a really good uh, in depth uh, look at uh, Sly Cooper. It gave me like another, like a revitalized appreciation for the series. It might actually be my favorite trilogy of all time because I think I brought it up before like best video game trilogies of all time. That might be neck and neck with uh, Halo, actually. You know, uh, Halo 3 was the perfect end of that. Trilogy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The fucking multiplayer was so cozy. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I was playing, um, and it was me and my stepbrother and his uh, girlfriend at the time. We were playing online on the same team. I got killed, and, I, and they were fucking teabagging. Oh, fuck you, motherfucker. And he looks at me and says, what the fuck did he do to you? He walks over. He fucking shot him down and said, good job. Mm-hmm. Got, or I remember one. Um, he yelled at me because I kept following a dude, but it turned out we were the ones who actually we were playing capture a flag, and hmm. I was the one who got the fucking flag. Hmm. Man. Uh, yeah, like I was thinking about this because uh, I was been watching uh, clips of uh, Sleepy Cabin, mm-hmm. um, and like their podcast. So it was giving me some ideas for like talking points. Uh, one one in particular was, um, do you have any uh, funny or interesting hospital stories? Ooh, let me. F- I have the. Oh, I know. Can it be a story that happened in the hospital that wasn't me because I wasn't born yet? Sure. So there was this doctor who used to work in a hospital in town. And um, they used to call him Dr. Short Dick because he had short dick syndrome. Well, there's, so they had a drunk come in. This drunk was violent and aggressive. He was spitting on people, spitting on them like a llama. So they put a, um, a, one of those masks over his face and when he spit, his mask was filling up with spit. Mm-hmm. Doctor walks in there and you know the guy says, "Take it off, you know, this is inhumane." So I take it off. Don't you spit in any of my nurses? Pulled it off, spat mm-hmm. in the nurse. Everyone's standing outside the door because he's been known to have a temper. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so, anyways, he says, "You can't do this. I'll call. You know, we'll get the police in here." He says, "If you call the police, I'll fuck every daughter you have." <laughs> Doctor had eight daughters. Mm. Decked him so hard he fell out. He actually broke one of his strengths from how he fell. Hmm. He walked out there, whole fucking wing staring at him. He says, you didn't see a thing. And and yeah, that was basically the hostile version of, I fell. He didn't hit me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, probably the most uh, interesting hospital story I have is uh, probably my uh, first panic attack that oh. I had at work. Um, like... I actually had, I remember I had uh, two panic attacks, like I think a month apart, mm-hmm. and both in both cases, uh, I thought I was having a heart attack, so they called it like an ambulance, mm-hmm. which like the second time was like really embarrassing, because it's like, okay, and like it, like when I get there, I'm like, okay, this is a fucking panic attack, what, like this is dumb, I should have driven here, because now it costs more, and now I'm making a scene and everything, mm-hmm. but like the first time it was like, uh, it, was, it was pretty scary, but like when I got there, uh, they were like, when, what they do to test for a heart attack is like they do the uh, finger up the ass. Um, and that was I got this like I got, I I wanted to talk about this because on the sleepy cabin episode that I watched, they were I think like two of them mentioned like how they like the doctor like sticks their whole finger up there. Mm-hmm. For me, it was just the tip, so it wasn't that bad. But like in both cases with them, they were like, oh, I was, it was embarrassing. I was, I was like startled. But for me, I was like I just took it like a pro. I'm, I just look at like. Like he takes it out. I look at. He goes to leave. We're gonna analyze this. I'm, I looked at him. And I'm like, what? We're not gonna cuddle. Now, can I tell you my room about story? My most embarrassing story. I had a doctor, and she was my doctor from like prenatal to when I, you know, to about two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. And you have a test uh, where they have you turn your head and cough. Uh-huh. <coughs> um, that was a really fucking weird experience, mm-hmm. you know. Also. This doctor wore fucking fishnet stockings mm-hmm. every fucking wear. Mm. Stilettos too. It was a very weird experience. This is like like an aunt doing this. How I describe it. Mm-hmm. Kinky. <laughs> oh god. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that I, I'm sorry. Like he took it like a champ. I'm gonna go like mm-hmm. just slam the, t- the operating table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like. <laughs> Another part of that uh, that same uh, like day or whatever, like 
when my mom got there, like I was just like I just started laughing for no reason. It was like really weird. Cause, yeah. And it's because and it's weird because like I don't actually remember it that well. But like and like I completely forgot about it until my mom brought it up like years later. I think it was just like a couple months ago, like this year, that she brought it up, and I'm like, did that ever actually happen? I don't, th- I don't remember that happening. But yeah, it was just like laying there on the. It's um, a defense mechanism sometimes. Huh. Yeah, but I was, yeah, I was just laying there on the cot. I don't know if, it, like, me and my mom were talking or if it was just, like, silent, and I just started laughing for, like, a straight minute. It was, like, really weird. I had, I, I, I have something similar happen. I'm not sure if it's this, but sometimes my mind will piece together things that aren't really relevant to what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And it can happen at the worst moments for me. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I, was, I, was, I wasn't even thinking of anything funny though. It was just I, like blank. Like, I don't even think I'm act. You know, when you don't think you're thinking, but you're actually thinking, uh-huh. that makes sense. Yeah. I remember, um, just there was this, it was years ago, and this is when, um, we were, um, it was just a very quiet evening. I was at uh, a family, a family, a friend of a family's house, and I remember that at her wedding, like six or her re-wedding they did a re-wedding because they had been married so long mm-hmm. there was a guy there with a fucking eye patch mm-hmm. and a sailor's hat on mm-hmm. and i wanted to talk to him are you ready to hear what his name was i then i then hmm. and i just heard fucking <laughs> and he lost his arrival his name just be van <laughs> and it's and it's stupid but it got me laughing and mm-hmm. i mentioned that there's that's my uncle hmm. he lost his eye to an accident yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've had moments like that too, where I'll remember something funny. Like it's, it sucks when it's in public because then you look like an idiot, or like, you look like you're crazy. Like, why is that man just laughing? Why Hide your children. Why is he covering your face? Yeah, like, like the one I think of is uh, I think it was last Christmas, last mm-hmm. December. Um, I'm on the Walmart. They're playing Christmas music, and all of a sudden, I remember that this uh, Saturday Night Live sketch. I think it's like Will Ferrell. He's like he's on this like spinning, rotating platform, mm-hmm. and like uh, while these uh, carolers are singing, and he's like, "It's the most wonderful time of the." And he's like, but he's like constantly rotating, so he has to like keep looking over his shoulder. And then he's, and he's like, "Okay, this is moving fast. I'm starting to get sick." And it goes on for another minute, and he just starts projectile vomiting <laughs> with like that trick where you put the uh, hose in, in your sleeve and just. Oh. Like, yeah, where you put your hand over your mouth to make it, like to hide the, the hose coming coming out of your wrist, and it's, like I just start laughing like an idiot for like a like two minutes, and I'm just trying to like hide my face from everybody. You know what? One of my favorite like weird moments was one of my favorite ones was. Um, have you ever seen the movie Doctor Strange Love? Um, that's I, I keep one. I, I know a, I have to keep seeing. There's it. a scene where the, where the character goes, "Mind theater, I can walk." And that's not something you bust out in public unless you're pretty sure everyone knows. And I'm in class, and that's when I was in edgy high school phase, and I fell, bunked my head. And when it, and the teacher says, "Are you all right?" and I bust out, "Mind fear, I can walk." That's not well appreciated by the Jewish teacher. In the world. <laughs> yeah, he sent me down for that one. Hmm. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, speaking of Jews, have you ever had a near-death experience? Actually, I did one time. A tree fe- or a tree branch fell and hit me in the head, and I was pretty sure I would die because mm. it got stuck on me. Mm. You know, because I live out in the woods, and that's why I don't like to walk in the woods with you when you get to the rotten tree branches. Mm-hmm. Fucking sucked. Mm. And I thought I was trapped until I realized why. Because the weight it fell on me, I was pinning it down, so I'm trying to do this, and I'm like, what the? Mm-hmm. I thought that was near death. Um, mm. I haven't been like hit by a car. Though, um, one time I had, um, my appendicitis, my appendix about the size of a cow tongue, and I was, like, five years old. Mm. Fucking, like, this big or some shit like that. Mm. I've heard people have died from appendicitis if it goes untreated. Yeah. By the way, I'm, as a little kid, I said, can we have it mounted on the wall? I just want to have it mounted. <laughs> little kid, you know, put a shotgun under there. Mm. My first... Yeah, I got that when I was about five years old. <laughs> Uh, the one that I think of is uh, the first car accident I was in. Oh, man. Uh, I think it was... The, yeah, it was the first car accident. No, it might have been the second one. But it was, like, the first major one because mm-hmm. it, like, totaled my car. I, I used to have, like, a Mercury Sable. And this was when I had my first job uh, at the at the Bria Bar. Mm-hmm. And uh, every, every day I would go, like, 
because I live out in LaGrange and like you have all these back roads where you go like 50 miles an hour. Like that's the standard speed limit. Mm. Um, some most people go like even faster than that. But uh, and it's really dangerous, especially at night when like deer can just come out of a tree like in front of you. Fucking you have, ninja deer. Yeah, you have like there's a reason there's so much roadkill on the sides of the road. It's like you, you just smash through those at like 50 miles an hour. It's, like they're basically pulp by the morning. Um, but yeah, there was this one time where, um, and it's, it's, it's usually hard to describe this because of like the weird, like stop sign stuff. There are no four way intersections. Like if it's a long road, then you'll have, it'll just be a two way intersection. Mm -hmm. So like I'm going down the, uh, like the part of this intersection, like the road where there's like, there is, there isn't a stop sign at this intersection, but there's a stop sign at, uh, at the other end. Uh, there's a car stopped up there. I'm, I'm driving by, and they and just just as I'm going in front of them, they hit the gas. They just tap like right, slam right into the side of the passenger side. I go fishtailing off of the road. Like I can feel like the car like like leave the ground as I'm like as I go, go off the road and like spiral into like this field. And like thank God because like I think I was like ten feet away from like hitting the telephone pole. But oh I like, motherfucker! But I like, uh, and and if I and if they'd gone like a second earlier, then I would have like killed the driver. Like I would, like I was smashed into him, like immediately, just killing him. But like, thankfully, I just like just spiral into the field. Were you injured? No, I only got. I think I only got like some whiplash, like mild whiplash, like pain in my neck. Uh, but like, I'm just like sitting there for like half a minute. I'm just like, and then I just jump out of the car. I, I just run over to them. I'm like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" And meanwhile, I'm, I, it doesn't even occur to me that I'm I'm probably the one who's like way, way, way probably needs to see if he's okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just picturing you walking over. Are you okay? There's a giant metal beam sticking out of your chest. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the fucking electric poles wrapped around your fur. I'm so sorry, man. There could have been like glass in my face and I wouldn't have even noticed. <laughs> and the guy's like, hey, you could have looked down and got the Jonah Hex thing going on and looked like a, you could... <laughs> I can cosplay for free anywhere I want. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I could have gotten some like badass anime scars. That you cool. you couldn't get that that cross shaped scar every fucking like he's a bad guy, but he could be good. Yeah, the Harlock. Yeah. God. Um, but yeah, that was like, and it's funny because like like they say like time slows down like when it happens like before like between like when you get hit and like when you stop. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really happen for me. It all just kind of happened at once. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't think I would have survived that, mainly because I would have been dying of an anxiety attack in the car. <laughs> they would have seen my arms coming out. Like, is he okay? Yeah. But that, like, uh, pretty much sold my car. I, I, it was, like, it just caved in, like, the whole side of the passenger's side. Man. But I got a cool new car anyway, so that's been holding up for a long time. Um, like, car crashes. I, I, I did see one car crash that's kind of... I hate to use the word impressive, but you know what I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Guy slipped, flipped, and he did a, he rolled almost three times, rolled over a car, and he walked out there. My favorite part was, I, I, I want to make this a bit of a known thing, I know a lot of the EMTs in the area, and we use this as a prop, so I call over, you know, fucking, um, I know there's no camera, so why do I have a prop, but I fucking call 911, and I know the dispatcher. And they send the whole fucking cavalry because the way I I I was like nine at the time, ten, you were really young. I worded it like a fucking ten weight crash. I mean, but you know it's still good because there were a couple people injured, but people in that car got slightly hurt. Yeah, that is good. I'm fucking scared of driving. Okay, fucking scared of driving because of shit like that. Mm. And the fact that my uh, feet get stuck under the dashboards of some cars. Mm -hmm. Uh and it was funny, like, uh, I remember uh, Rick last week, he was mm -hmm. asking if we were going to reapply to uh, WOBC, mm -hmm. but with all the F-bombs shooting off here, I, I'd be kind of We nervous. could do our own show on there. We could do, like, a really nerd hipster show, like, this week we'll be talking about Captain Marvel, <laughs> of a person who uh, once dated Stan Lee's favorite fan. <laughs> Tell me more about yourself, <laughs> John. And then he just screams the N-word. <laughs> The, the microphone. And it, it <laughs> cut to like, I I I really one day wish to be so wealthy that I can buy out an entire stage production audience, so I can just be the one guy sitting in the audience mm -hmm. and start booing them. <laughs> um, one more thing I was gonna say. Oh yeah, 
Uh, how's how's your uh, creative process going? Um, uh, from last Wednesday to Tuesday, I didn't do any writing whatsoever, ever, but I did start a new novel idea. Hmm. I want to write Forrest Gump, but it's fantasy. Hmm. Um, yeah, it basically follows the kind... He is the kind of character that takes off his hat and rings it when he talks to you. Hmm. That kind of nervous character who is a half-goblin. Mm-hmm. And it is me long, deep, and continuously fucking over every character that does half-breed character. Like, he's a kawaii desu half-elf. No, he's half-goblin. Hmm. He has a compulsion to eat rats. Hmm. And it's sort of me satirizing fantasy section, and, you know... Because I believe that, that, you know how there is so much lazy sci-fi, there's even worse fantasy. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's literally just Tolkien and he's, I'm going to jack it over in this part. My elves are like Tolkien's elves, mm-hmm. but they have snake tongues. Mm-hmm. Well, you talk about fantasy being bad. You like, I remember, yeah, Rick brought in that uh, magazine and like all the agents listed in that, uh, Writer's Digest, yeah. all the all the agents listed, they said they don't accept fantasy. Yeah. And I think it's because, yeah, fantasy is so fucking terrible right now. Just, it, it's fucking bonkers. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'm doing right now, I was actually revisiting some uh, animation, trying to like animate a walk cycle. Because um, I actually... Uh, Rewatched uh, Persistence of Vision, the mm-hmm. uh, Thief and the Cobbler, Richard Williams documentary. Uh, it's 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 still very depressing. Um, like I actually like stopped before like it got to the end where they said you know we had to we couldn't finish it we had to give it to the completion bond company and just showing that like hor- horrifyingly depressing rap party where everybody's just staying around like drinks in their hands just depressed and Richard Williams looks like he wants to pull all his hair out. Um, but yeah, that made me think about, uh, revisiting and trying like animation and, uh, I dusted off my uh, copy of the animator survival guide. Um, I, um, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Like, and, and, uh, it's, it's a little tedious. I mean, animation is tedious by nature. Mm-hmm. I was doing it in uh, clip studio, which you can only do like frame by frame animation. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I was going to like see about, uh, trying some 2d and blender too. I uh, re- also recently uh, reinstalled RPG Maker. Hmm. I got it when it was on sale, and I never really did anything with it. And um, I'm also trying to learn fucking sprite making. Hmm. Uh, I just want to make a like a really. I want to do that. I want to cash in on that trend of really depressing. You know, like fucking. Um, uh, oh no, it's an allegory, but it turns out the allegory is not an allegory; it's a fucking psychotic mess. Because mm-hmm. I like that kind of story. Well, you gotta get ahead of the curb and uh, yeah. like dust off stuff from like the two thousands. Go like make your own uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. I had the idea of making a character named Cancer the Human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's just like it's, it's a reference to a YouTuber like McCaffrey. He uh, he remember Duel Masters. Uh-huh. Oh, that's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah, it's a clone of Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, oh, that's uh, the sh- the game within the show. No, there's an actual game called Duel Masters. Hmm. It's it's Magic the Gathering, uh, but worse. Hmm. And um, he made a, a joke character named Cancer the Human about one. I just want to have like, a little Easter egg to that. Mm-hmm. Um... I found with RPG Maker, you can actually make Final Fantasy-style fights. Hmm. Like where there's four, you know, five-on-five characters, and you can see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, video games are more profitable than ever now. Um, even if you're looking at the bad stuff, it's still like, <laughs> like it's a better state than what comics are in right now. God. Like the only reason I've been sticking with comics, I mean, I love I love making comics, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like, you know, you're basically uh, you go, g- going uh, telling your story on hard mode because like like one of the biggest upsides to comic making. Um, it's probably more true than for manga than anything is that the creator you're he's putting out his like specific vision without like any interference from um, other people working on it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like a net positive for me. Um, I would also I would love to uh, work on like an animated film or like an animated short or something with a team of people. That would be neat. Um, I was just I just need to learn like the uh, software necessary to do that. Um, but yeah, I've been interested in animation again. You know, like I would like to like do more of that. I always thought animation it, it's an elusive thing to me. I, I always wanted to do stop motion. I always wanted oh, yeah. to do something with like o- old monster movie style things. Mm-hmm. I know it's funny, like because back on video games, um, 
I remember, uh, and I know that uh, Thomas on the Shitty Web Comics Discord, he brings mm-hmm. this up often, is uh, how Dave Sim, the creator of Cerberus, back in the 90s, uh, he was talking about how comic books need to start competing with uh, video games now. Because uh, you need like you need comics that tell more interesting or more personal stories than just like superheroes, Marvel and DC superheroes. You need more broader subjects because the consumer now that uh, video games are like up an up and coming thing in the, in the '90s, like you need people to uh, take more risks, and the comics they didn't, just didn't. No. They they regressed. Yeah. Uh huh. It's only now that like. DC and Marvel are starting to take digital comics seriously, and it's like way, way too little, too late. Yeah, um, the thing I always want to do though uh, with making a story, I want to make a story that you feel like you and a storyteller are sitting next to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, you're looking behind the dungeon master screen. Mm. Also, you but- know what is a really, really, really fucking underrated game? I really, really, well, I keep saying really, really well. I really think um, that are. It's called This War of Mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard of that. It's really good. It's depressing as fuck. It's also really fucking so It's like, who doesn't get to eat tonight? You don't get to eat. It's Oprah. Mm-hmm. Oprah goes, and you get a meal, and you get a meal. She turns and just stares at the guy. Mm-hmm. Just quietly staring. Uh-huh. Yeah, Newgrounds, I think they still uh, accept uh, game submissions. Do you, uh, do you think uh, RPG Maker... Uh, yeah. I think you can forward that. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of RPG Maker games on Newgrounds. I, I think, think that the Room game was an RPG Maker thing. It was made in RPG Maker. It was? Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, one thing I'm trying to do, though, um, I, I did have uh, one thing I'm playing with is lighting a plugin. So mm-hmm. that when you walk into an area, that the light actually casts shadow and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that reminds me. I want to shout this guy out, uh, M. Dot Strange. Mm-hmm. He's he's still making his own games. Um, he's been around for a while now. Uh, he's made like three feature length films, all animated, and uh, in the, I think two games at this point in uh, Unity. Some of which are, uh, I think they're pretty good. I haven't. I mean, he's a guy who gets overlooked a lot uh, by me, also. Uh, but. Yeah, his movies are pretty great. Uh, they're like they're experimental, um, and I give him leeway because uh, like they're all made by him, like specifically just by one guy. I think that he hires voice actors, but I think that's the extent of like other other people who work on his movies. I'd say check him out. Uh, I don't think that his movies are for everyone, and that's probably a good thing. But uh, you can see like he put a lot of effort into them. I like seeing a vision. I like seeing vision and work. Mm-hmm. I also simultaneously enjoy bad creepypasta games. Like, I love it when they can't even speak fucking English. <laughs> There's an entire uh, trilogy of creepypasta world that fr- it takes the guy free fucking games to learn how to put periods in. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, anything else you'd uh, like to talk about? Really. How much? Time? Yeah, we we're, we're past the hour mark, so I think we can wrap up whenever we want. Um, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, I'm going to be working more on, uh, I'm going to see, like, dabble in some more animation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish that I was, like, more obsessed with my creations, that's for sure. I, I feel like I get too easily distracted. I, I get distracted between my creations. It's like having 12 mistresses and all of them know each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I would love to just be able to sit down for, like, 10 hours a day and just work nonstop. I, I, I want to be a workaholic. I like I I know that some people uh, say like oh no you you don't actually want that I'm like so let, let me at least try it you know try it after all I'm kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I tell you what you I, know I was, what I was you... thinking about uh, um, the uh, I remember one time at school uh, at Spectrum I would they, they showed the uh, Saved by the Bell episode the very special one where uh, Jesse gets addicted to caffeine pills mm-hmm. and. Um, I think, like, yeah, and uh, they were asking everybody, like, you know, oh, like, uh, what what do you do to relieve your stress? Uh, somebody was like, you know, I, I play video games, or I go outside for a walk. It gets me, I'm like, oh, I take uh, caf- caffeine pills. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm like, oh, God, oh, thank, you, thank God. You could say, I smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weed every day. God, uh, yeah, that reminds me of, like, um, you know what the best gift college ever gave me was? Sitting down. Look, oh, I have a word processor open, and I got a video game open. Like, which do I do? And then I go, 
www.por. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, and it's, it's so much like, I can't even do that. I like, do I, do I watch pornography or do I get an extra 45 minutes of sleep? <laughs> You've been to LC? Yep. Have you ever went through the Gamers Lounge? Oh, I didn't go to the fan sales. I went to the oh, Wellington LC. Okay. It's like, you walk in there like, I know, okay. I got a cow. You want to see my cow? <laughs> and the teacher pulls a picture of cows. All right, now we're going to talk about a book about a man who beats his children. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been to the Wellington one. I, I go to the main campus, and, like, the gamers' lounge there, it, the smell is unimaginable. It's just, like, <laughs> like concentrated body odor. It's just, like, soaked into the walls. It, they might have cleaned it up since the last Imagine time. Imagine if you walk in there and you say, Sakurai, 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 and they all start coming out of the walls. <laughs> You're the spit of our master. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't imagine going to one of these, uh, like, Evo uh, quick Go to tournaments. Evo, but what you do is you walk around, you have, like, a sensor, like, a plague sensor full of Febreze. <laughs> bring out your dead! Bring out your dead! I'm glad that uh, so many of these, so many people are, like, shaming, like, those uh, communities, like, for, like... That's just a reminder. Uh, like, just shaming them into showering and putting... Have on. a fire hose. Oh, yeah. Fire hose the, the losers, and then the winner gets dunked in this sulfuric acid. It doesn't work for furries, though. Like, the shame only makes them stronger. It's like an anime boss. Uh. You thought this could defeat me. And he goes, this isn't even my final degenerate. And, he's, and he just, like, the costume splits into a new costume. <laughs> God. But, uh, I think I'm ready to wrap up, are you? I am. Okay, well, um, I've been Tony. I've been Zach. And this has been the Monkey Bar. <laughs> Very cringe.